Hello. So I wanted to answer the question, what is happiness? And I didn't want to use just an ordinary definition because the ordinary definition has some problems. It's one, not really speculative. Like when I want an answer to this question, I want something deep, something long. Like uh, think of Ralph Waldo Emerson when he answers the question on self-reliance. Uh, it's like 15, 20 page essay. It's a lot more complex. Uh, also the definition of happiness is a bit circular or it could be circular because it simply says that it's a subjective state of well-being and a subjective state of well-being could also be circular because it could just be happiness. Uh, so the definition isn't like really sufficient to answer this question. Now I, ha I do have some preconceived opinions, obviously I've spoken with other people, uh, I've read other things, I've heard conversations, but I don't really have a well thought out uh, response to what is happiness. I actually only just have the response to offer what other people have told me, I haven't really thought about it on my own. And so what I want to do here is share some of the books that I hope will answer some of the questions I have for uh, the topic of happiness, or the topic of like what is happiness. So the first question I actually came up with is, uh, what does it mean to be happy? And I got a few different potential answers here. Uh, it, it might not seem like a good question, but then when you think about it, it, comes, it becomes actually like a really good question. You have on the one hand, you could say that happiness is an outlook. I've heard, I've, you could think of a Stoic or like a Buddhist monk. They would be the kinds of people who would say that happiness is an outlook on life. Um, accepting that life is struggle can make a happier life for you because you have the right expectations. Buddhists would say that you got to fix your expectations to be happy. Versus is happiness just simply an emotion? I think those are not necessarily mutually exclusive from one another, but they could be exclusive depending on the worldview that someone has to offer. Uh, the same thing can hold true for not just um, an, a worldview, but also uh, a lack of something versus the presence of something. So is happiness the lack of having problems or is happiness the presence of what you want? It's another good question when you think about what it means to be happy and I'm hoping I can find some books that will answer those questions. Here is another good question that is a bit more neuroscience, philosophy of mind, psychology oriented. Uh, is happiness mutually exclusive to other states of emotion? Um, the best one I came up with off the top of my head was happiness and anger. Are these mutually exclusive or can you be happy and angry? Uh, some people say joy and sorrow are mutually exclusive. Uh, obviously ha happiness and sadness. Um, another one is our joy and happiness uh, mutually exclusive as well. That's something I wanted to have answered. I think Spinoza, uh, sorry, Finding Spinoza and Search for Spinoza. Uh, Antonio Damasio's book, I forget his actual uh, title. I think that book would be a good book for trying to determine um, if happiness is a mutually exclusive emotional state to other emotional states. Do you have any book suggestions on that? I'm actually a bit in the dark on that because I don't know where else to look besides Antonio Damasio. Totally up for suggestions on that. Another one I had in mind was like the behavior of happiness. So I wanted to know, for example, uh, is behavior, or sorry, is, the, is happiness like a light switch? Can it be turned on and off? I know uh, endocrinology or behavioral endocrinology has a lot to say about human emotions and they tend to take the stance that things are modulatory, that they're kind of always present, but they modulate uh, heavily. I think uh, Sapowski's Behave and his book, uh, the one with the, the super mouse on it, uh, Troubles with Testosterone and other essays, I think it's called, was a big proponent of this. Um, another one is, uh, is Happiness Gradient. Uh, can you? Is it basically, do you go from being happy to sad, or is there in between emotional states? That's another question I have in mind. Uh, so basically, can you become minutely, minutely less happy to the point where you're sad? I would like to know the answer to that. And I do want to know if someone has the actual worldview. I'd love to see this worldview fleshed out that like happiness is a law of nature in the same way that gravity is, meaning it's always present, but that uh, other laws are impinging upon it, making it weaker, stronger, basically varying it in intensity. That's something I think uh, that could be made the case for, but um, I, I had not own any books like that. I would love to find some books like that. It sounds like a super interesting idea. Now, some other questions that I do have are like, uh, what, are the imp what is the impact of happiness on your life? I would love to see a study, like maybe experimental psychology, or even sociology or something like this. Uh, what, is, where is, what happens to people who become happy? and then you follow them for 10 years and versus people who, are, who just don't become happy or don't believe in the notion of happiness. I'd love to see some com uh, comparisons, like what are the empirical consequences of being happy? Um, on top of that, 
uh, or like to see happiness by like sociological factors. Are spiritual people more happy? Uh, are non-spiritual people more happy? Because those things will help you answer the question, right? If people who practice spirituality are happier than people who don't practice spirituality, the very obvious conclusion, which could be wrong, is that uh, spirituality leads to happiness, right? Um, or the same thing can be said for people who are working versus not working. I want to find a good book on the sociology of happiness, not just the economics or the psychology, but also the sociology. That would be very, very interesting to find. Yeah, so overall, those are kind of the questions I have, right? Like, what are the mental conditions of, of happiness, right? What are the mental conditions involved in happiness? What are the mental conditions, or sorry, physical conditions involved with happiness? Uh, is there a mix between those two, right? Is happiness a, a both a spiritual practice, but also you need enough money in your life to actually engage in the spiritual practice? You know, you just get all the variables involved, throw them together, let's see what happens. Now, with that out of the way, here are some of the books I'm going to have so far. And again, I would love, love, love recommendations, not only just like in the mainstream self-help, I mean, there's going to be a no shortage of self-help books and happiness, unfortunately. But if you could find me like experimental psychology books, economics books, uh, neurobiology books, any kind of books like that, the uh, ethics books, metaphysics books, any books like that, that would be great because uh, I did look for some and I can't find a super like, great amount of them, which means I'm probably going to have to dig a little bit deeper instead of going through journal articles and uh, like papers and stuff and look through their references and citations. So the first book is Man's Search for Meaning. Um, I wasn't going to put this on this list, but somebody said that it's a book about happiness. Uh, I know I know like the TLDR of this book. I haven't actually read it. I know the TLDR. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Someone just said, yeah, Man's Search for Meaning is like a book that can be good for happiness. So we'll see how that goes. The next one is uh, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. I know this is a self-help book, but um, Carnegie actually is not as bad as many of the other self-help industry books. He doesn't like mystify it, doesn't become like this uh, pseudo expert or anything. It's very like solid life advice. And uh, he did it before a lot of other people did it, to be fair. So he wasn't really copying others at that time. So yeah, how to stop, how to stop worrying and start living. Now we have uh, Cicero on The Good Life. Cicero has a lot of writings, and On The Good Life is basically his reflections on life. I mean, he had a lot of important things to do in life as well. So he's not like your typical person reflecting on life. Uh, he has things on like duty, on friendship, on oration, uh, on to school him. I don't know what that is, whatever that is. I'm sure that's important. <laughs> so yeah, this is another book I have, is On the Good Life by Cicero. Now I have Joy on Demand here, which is a self-help book. And I already know what the book is about. And I know the book is going to be repetitive. The book basically is going to preach meditation. The only reason it's on here is because I own the physical book. And also because it's going to pre preach like meditation and mindfulness. And I figured I should at least cover one book on meditation and mindfulness. Although it's been rehashed and repeated so much since like 2004, it's kind of like annoying now, right? <laughs> but I'll read, I'll read Joy and Demand as well. I'll have to review this book. So those are kind of like some of the the meditations and like philosophy, self-help books that I have. I don't think I want to get too many more books like that. The next one is going to be The Conquest of Happiness by Bertrand Russell. This is a bit more of like a a metaphysics book because he does make metaphysical claims about the nature of happiness in this book. So I'll review this one. This is going to be one for the philosophy. Uh, if you have any other suggestions for the philosophy books, uh, totally open to those. Um, the Happiness Hypothesis by Jonathan Haidt. This would be an experimental psychology book, I believe. Uh, the, the subheader of this book is like putting ancient wisdom to the test of modern science. So I'm under the impression that it's going to be applying like stoic beliefs uh, to experimental conditions. That's what I'm under the impression of and how they contribute to happiness. Uh, but this will be one of the books for experimental psychology. I definitely would like something a bit more less controlled in labs. So I'm hoping that this isn't all controlled experiments, but we'll see how this goes as well. Now, Hardwiring Happiness was a neuroscience book. I was looking for, I think I've said this in another video, I was looking for a book that wasn't just straight up neuroscience, but also uh, a little bit more uh, self-helpy, not too much tech, because like I can't really review a book that's just hardcore neurochemistry or anything like that. But I have a feeling that this actually isn't going to answer a lot of the questions I actually wanted from neuroscience. I do have this other book called The Pleasure Compass by John Linden, but I already read it and 
it was more oriented towards like experiments. I would say it's more like, um, I don't know, experimental psychology, even though he was a neuroscientist and he was concerned with the, the behavior of the brain. I, I couldn't find a book that really was what I'm looking for in this area. And I'm, I'm still gonna look, but I want something that is gonna go over like the neuro, People said like Behave by Robert Sapolsky, but that book is not about happiness. I guess you could tie it in. Um, something that's going to go over like a little bit of the endocrinology, maybe a little bit of like uh, the neural circuitry involved, and put it in ordinary language, like a mainstream neuroscience book of happiness that isn't just a straight up self-help book. This is the closest one I could find. Maybe you know a better one. Uh, happiness, Lessons from a New Science, I believe. Uh, I believe this is a economics book to some degree um, because it goes over, I guess it's sociology and economics. Yeah, but it, anyways, it goes over uh, things like when GDP goes up, does happiness go up? Yeah, do the happiness indexes go up? Um, when your neighbor gets wealthier, do you get happier? When you get wealthier in comparison to your neighbor, do you get happier? Things like this, um, kind of like an economics book, but also sociology. He has another book called The Ethics of Happiness. I will probably buy that as well and review it uh, if this book is good. If this book is good, then I'll get a second one because I actually don't have a book on the ethics of happiness. So we'll see uh, how this one goes. Now, there's this one as well, The Art of Happiness, A Handbook for Living. Um, just simply because it's ideas from the Dalai Lama, I figured I would read something about it. I know nothing about the book though. So those are the books I have so far. I do have other books, but they're like maybe not directly about happiness, and so I'm not going to add them. Um, I will get the Oxford Handbook of Positive Psychology, and people have mentioned uh, stumbling upon happiness, the happiness equation. I will look into those as well, but I have a suspicion they're going to be a bit too close to the happiness hypothesis and their content, or something like that. Um, if if you ha again if you have any of the good must read books that I'm missing on this topic because I want to do like 20 30 books I'm gonna write like a chapter in one of my books on happiness uh, if you have any suggestions let me know uh, I'll look into them but with that being said bye bye.